And that person, like I said, won't visit you when you're sick, won't counsel you when you're going through. And yet we go off in our applause. I see it all the time. Let God see you. Praise him for the servant of the Lord in this house. That's what I'm talking about. Let God see how you love his vessel, the angel of this house, and your applause. She's always on the red carpet and look like it, don't she? <laughs> Thank you. Blessings on you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am honored to be here today and always a joy to be home. Whenever I come here to Faith Temple, I've been coming here since we started over yonder. Y'all, anybody remember back over yonder? And Bishop, Kyle, and I'll never forget the part that this woman of God has played in my life over the years. And uh, we've kind of like grown up together. We've grown young together. And, I've <laughs> and I am thankful beyond measure to see what God is doing in this place and in this house. How many of you feel like there's something hidden that's ready to be revealed for you? I mean, think, think about it for a moment. Something that God is ready to reveal for you. Yes. It's, uh, it's now. It's, yes. it's, we're, it's, we're in a right now moment. We're in a right now season. Do you really believe that? Yes. While you've been praying, giving, seeding, sowing, seeking, hoping, and looking. But now, reach over and grab somebody by the hand and say, Now yes. is that moment yes. that you've been waiting for. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord in this house, would you please? Help me praise him with all of your heart. Give him glory with, with everything on the inside of you. Hallelujah. I am, uh, I have so much to share. I'm just going to slice off of it this morning and wrap it up tonight. I have some very special guests that are coming over from Atlanta. Some of y'all uh, have seen him play up and down the floor and pound and dunk and slam the ball. And finally, I got him to commit being this close. He's bringing a group of folks over from Atlanta. He'll be here in this evening service. My nephew, Terry Cummings, four-time NBA All-Star. So make sure and tell your young people, any sports enthusiasts. Hold on one minute. Wait, wait. I'm in Birmingham, right? Well, hold on. Is, 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 is. See? Y'all have no, your, your team ain't playing today is at Auburn. Praise God, we're gonna have church today. <laughs> I heard about y'all on Sundays. I've been pastors be praying, Father, please let them have the game on Saturday in Birmingham. Only in Birmingham do they do that because Sundays y'all have a shutdown. Ooh, I would love to see the Lord send an angel in the middle of halftime. <laughs> So, yeah, he'll be here tonight, so bring some of your friends and kids and young folks out. Make sure they're all here. Some other guests are coming over with him, and they're going to be here tonight. We're going to be having a Holy Ghost time all day today. The Lord is faithful. Amen? He really, really is. I, I want to deal with what the Lord has put, I really believe, has put in my heart for uh, this moment for this time right here at Faith Temple. And if you have your Bibles, let's go. Us, I still like preaching from the Bible. Amen. Yes. I write. I've got books out there. I've got all the kind of stuff. But even books that I have written are all based from the Word of God. Amen. So let's go there and find out something here today before I even give you the subject title. Uh, I want you to really focus for just a moment on exactly how God is readying this church and this ministry for its next level of operation. I want you to grab what I just said, the next level of operation. Heretofore, that you have not known, it's pending. You ever call a check on your uh, debit card and find out what's in there? Hmm? It's already accounted for, but it's pending. It's already been spent, but it's pending. Somebody's already deposited, but it is pending. And what you don't care about is that something is pending. What you care about is how much is left over. <clears throat> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. What they call it, your available balance is. Yes. 
Anybody know about that? You see all this stuff is pending, right? It's okay. But do I have an available balance where I can go ahead on and enjoy this shopping moment? <laughs> all right. In the Bible, uh, let's go with me in Matthew, say Matthew chapter 28. Say Matthew chapter 28. Where the word of God is alive for me. How many really believe that? Matter of fact, whole, whole, whole 28, go to Matthew chapter 14. That's where I want to start today. Matthew chapter 14. And I welcome all of those of you who are watching us by live stream and those who follow me across the country and around the world on my Facebook uh, broadcast. We have many watchers who are looking right now from the Caribbean, Trinidad. I want to welcome all of our Trinidad people and St. Martin and Bahamas and many of the followers who are with me all the way from Thailand who's watching right now. Let's give the national audience, an international audience, a hand of appreciation. Hmm. Okay, Matthew chapter 14 and verse, I'm gonna start here at verse 20, um, verse 22. Straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountains apart to pray. And when evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. Somebody said, why? Somebody once asked me, why did he have to walk? Well, I say, well, when he got there and looked around, uh, there was no boat, so he had to walk. Anyway, um, y'all catch that tree now and tomorrow, right? A little bit slow this morning, but it's going to be all right between now and 2 o'clock. He came walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Look at someone next to you care and say, Be careful what you cry out for especially if you already don't have it. Be careful what you cry out for. They cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them saying, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Give them three commands, three statements, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But, everybody say, but. but. When he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Aren't you all glad for unsophisticated prayers? Amen. I'm going to say that one more time in this day of sophistication and high technology and face imaging and instant imaging. And aren't you glad for unsophisticated prayer? Yes, amen. You don't have the time to speak French, Dutch, English, Swahili, Yohili, Mahili, whatever the case may be. Sometimes you just need two words. Save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, everybody said, the wind ceased. Say it again. When they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Uh, if I were to use for a title today, I'm going to pin this between two uh, readings that seemingly are uh, diametrically opposed to one another because they won't seem to match up talking about uh, walking on the water and then I want to tie it on the other end of another scripture that look like well how does this fit with that so that way you have to stay to hear how it matches yes. or you will walk out confused uh -huh. so we see here this story that unfolds where Jesus has just got through feeding the multitudes they witnessed this miracle you've heard the story a thousand times before let me take you a little bit deeper and y'all go a little bit deeper with the story yes. You might sit there and look at me like, I done heard this every time. What in the world? He would just keep listening. I'm going to open your eyes. Y'all know I've been coming here for what, 215,000 years? But anyway, so he gets through feeding the multitudes, and they witness a phenomenal event take place. 
and two fish and five loaves of bread, multitude over 5,000 fish, not even counting the women and children. So if you look at that whole number, we're talking about over 15,000 or more fed. If there are two women or more to, to one man, and he counted on this part, he counted just the men, 5,000 fed. And yet there's this multitude of uh, food left over, 12 baskets full out of two fish and five loaves of bread. Uh, there's something that I like to think about this story that blows me away, and that is, the, remember the little boy had the lunch that his mom gave him, right? Can you imagine what happened when he got back home and he knocking on the door and his mama comes to the door and peeps out the window and see 12 men standing behind him and she wants to know what in the world is going on and he opens up the door and says, Mama, you ain't gonna believe this? <laughs> mama, you ain't gonna, boy, where you been? Mama, you ain't gonna believe this? Boy, where have you been? Who are all these men? Boy, mama, 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 hold it, you ain't gonna, mama, mama, you, you, you ain't gonna believe this? Boy, who are all these men? Mama, see, what had happened was, what had happened was, oh, I did what you told me to do, Mama. I went to the store. I got these two little fish and five loaves of bread. But on my way home, there was this man said he needed to borrow my lunch uh -huh. to feed some folk. But when he brought my lunch back, it's, it's swolled up. <laughs> it swallowed up so big and, it, and what happened he gave me my lunch back but one thing I know about this man now since I met him when I gave him something small he gave me back something bigger so I don't know how to explain this mama but he had it was so big I gave him the two little fish and five loaves but when he, it was so big and so stretched out he told his 12 workers y'all help him carry home his groceries Twelve baskets full, yes. and the disciples witnessed this. Yes. And then he says to them, he's sending the multitude away. The Bible says he constrains them to come. Now you remember that word constrain in the Hebrew means to hurl with force. In other words, he shoved them because they were walking. They were kind of pimp walking. Y'all know what a pimp walking is? Yes. You know, the pimp walk is kind of like walking, trying out cool pimp. You know, like walking cool. So they weren't moving fast enough. Anybody remember that old school song, You Got to Move? Uh -huh. Come on, y'all remember, remember this song, You Got to Move? When the Lord gets ready, you got to move. But they weren't moving fast enough. And so the Bible says he constrained them. What I want to say to you today here at Faith Temple and all of those of you who are watching all around the world, God's next level of miracles are so intense, they're so simply out of this realm of understanding, he's going to push you into position to see what you're about to see. Oh, I need you to get this. So he hurls them with force and commands them to get into the ship and then he goes up into the mountain and he begins to pray. And the amazing part is uh, the subject title would be uh, moving out to move up in God. Amen. I'm moving out to move up in God. So how do you uh, can reconcile this together with what I'm about to uh, have you to read? And that is something so seemingly diametrically opposed. So let's run over to Matthew 28. Hold this. Matthew 28 and verse um, 1. Matthew 28 and verse 1. I already gave you that before. I want to read that now. And let's see how we can pull this together. 28 and verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. Everybody say earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back a stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. The angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay and Go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have 
whole Jew. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word. Now, how am I going to fit this two together? Watch this now. I'm, I, I, he's risen from the dead and he sends his boys out into the sea and he goes into the mountain to pray. What I want you to focus in upon is the moment of your life that God gets ready to usher you into a new realm of miracle expectation. There is a stir that takes place of the which you may not understand. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but hey, these two women were up before the breaking of day going into a graveyard. Yes. Yeah, anybody here feel anointed to start walking into graveyards about three o'clock in the morning? And as I know, I know some of you Holy Ghost feel, folk feel like, oh, that wouldn't have bothered you. No, first of all, I'm not going. I don't have the call of God to walk into graveyards at three, four in the morning. They were put there for a reason and let them lay. But they decided to go and see Jesus. And yet when they got there, there was somebody there Amen. all lit up uh -huh. without any electrical cords, Amen. illuminated and it wasn't Christmas. And this person was talking. Yes. And you could see right through them. Come on, y'all talk to me. Uh -huh. You wonder why these men looked and fell for dead and like y'all would have still been standing there too. You would have been, you know, you'd have fell right like the rest of them. Eyes closed because you are seeing something that's not normal. Everybody said not normal. Now you go back, I'm taking this back and forth, you come back into this moment where there were two fish and five loaves, my 5,000 fed, and this phenomenal thing takes place, and then Jesus hurls them into the ship, and he goes into the mountain to pray. Both have moved out, but both are about to be elevated and moved up. Now we come back to the end of Matthew 28, and these two women were told to come in and see as proof. And when they saw that he was not there, they took off running with great fear. The word fear here literally means reverence and a great yeah. honor, as opposed to the fear that the other men who were dead, yeah. or uh, like they were, they were scared. That was a scared fear. But the fear that these women had was a reverential fear. That means I'm not going to let nothing stop. Stop me from telling you that Jesus has risen from the dead. There was such a fear, such a reverence. It was such a, oh my God, I've got to tell somebody what I have seen. Oh my God, he has risen like he has said. I'm going to run. I've got great joy and great fear. And then yet those 12 who were about to see something equally phenomenal. Yes. Are y'all walking with me? Watch how this works together. They're put into a situation that they are unseemingly prepared for. Now, this is pre-death Christ, and we're seeing the two women after the resurrection of Christ. Where they both match up at is they're about to see a phenomenal event take place in this individual who is apparent and transparent. Y'all yes. are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. He's a parent and able to uh, show them something great during the multitude, but he's transparent as he gets up out of the grave. Yes. And you think about this, what happened? The Bible says there was a great earthquake. Everybody say a great earthquake. Now the angel of the Lord has saw the two women coming and they were contemplating how are we going to get in there knowing that there is a stone in front of this grave. I need you to understand right about here, God sees the stone that's been in front of your opportunity. Amen. Come on now. Uh -uh, I'm on All it. Right. Yeah. God can not only see the stone, he's already got a preparation made. Yeah. He not only sees the stone, he sees the intimidators that's been hanging around telling you, if you come anywhere near this change, if you come anywhere near this different opportunity, I'm going to cut you down. Those were the soldiers. God says, I've got a two-way miracle for you. I'm not only going to give an earthquake to shake away your intimidators, I'm going to give an earthquake to open up this door. Now, I'm not, unlike, unlike Lazarus, unlike Lazarus who stone had to be rolled away for him to get out, this stone had to be rolled away for them to get in. Yeah. 
Oh, y'all need to catch this screen on tomorrow. Uh, he told them, roll the stone away because I'm going to let this man come out and you're going to witness something. But on Jesus' behalf, Jesus was already out. He, I own it. I'm walking right on through here because I can do what I need to do. I'm walking through here. Oh, I need to open up so you can see what I did. I'm hearing, are you hearing me? He's saying the next level that I show you, I am going to show you what you have heretofore not seen and not ever even comprehended. When you decide to make up in your mind, I'm going to move out in God. He is going to move you up in a place such as you've never known before in your life. Is there anybody here ready to go for the next realm or the next level from watching two fish and five loaves feed 5,000 to what getting ready to be put in a place to see him get ready to do something on a watery substance and at the same time are you ready to feel the impact and the glory of God who will literally come through a thing and move it so you can get in it am I doing all right tying it together so far can can I tie a little bit more so watch this 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 is just this (laughs) this just takes me back to my midwestern days and just kind of trips me out anybody been tripped out and you read something, you just kind of get so like, oh, Father, my goodness, Lord, why did you, okay, how did you, okay, I believe you. Have, you. have you got to that point where you want to say, why did you, how did you, but you don't know what else to say, says, I believe you. Amen. I Just look, look at someone next to you and say, I believe God. I believe God. Say it one more time, I believe, I believe God. When you make up in your mind that you're going to move out in God, you are going to get ready to move up in God. Are you with me so far? As the stone was rolled away for them to get in to see, uh, to bear witness, Jesus puts what looks like the disciples in what looks like an impossible situation. God will sometimes move out on you. I want that to soak in. He will move out on you just to get you to move up in him. From the Old Testament to the New, you will find men and women of God who for a season and period in their life cried out to God, where are you, Lord? Because they couldn't hear from him. (laughs) Can you imagine? In Job chapter 1, being called by God Almighty to the devil that you are perfect and upright You fear me and you excuse or you hate evil with a passion. That's God's testimony of Job to the devil. And then the next day, everything that could go wrong, everything that could be unleashed from hell comes invading into your house. Everything that the devil has comes out of hell and to bring it into your house. And he brings it in successions. One after another, after another. If you ever read that story and see the announcers knocking on the door, the Bible says before one could complete his statement of pain, another one jumps and says, oh, but wait a minute. I was out there with all those who were tending the sheep and someone came up and they took all the sheep and they killed them and I'm the only one. Wait, 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 I got to tell you something. I was over by your son's house and the storm came up and killed them. Wait, 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 I got something to tell you. Everything that you had, all your money is gone. All your children are dead. You got to have six funerals in one day. Imagine this, and then you go through a period of time, if you were equate a chapter as a year from chapter 1 to chapter 38, because that's how long it took for God to come back to speak to Job. If you equate a chapter as a year, let's just say each chapter is one year, that was 38 years in which he could not hear from God. Now, how many of us will still be coming to church? <laughs> Paying our tithe and giving offering. And no matter what prophecy has been said, no matter how many hands have laid on you and had enough oil to pour it on you to you run your own car. Yeah. And you still haven't got no answer yet. 38 years. All your friends have come by and they have speculated on you and speculated and they've been getting to wonder how come you ain't got no breakthrough yet? How come you have not made it through yet? I'm here to tell you that just when you got to make up in your mind that I'm going to move out. Maybe God feel, maybe I feel like God has moved out on me. Maybe I feel like God left me. Sometimes God will move out on you just to get you to move up in him. I'm here to tell you that when God moves out, there's something that he wants you to come into. When it seems like you cannot hear his voice, you cannot feel his presence. When it seems like 
the glory of God has moved out on you. Don't be afraid. Get yourself together. Huddle yourself together and say, Lord, I don't feel your presence, but I know that means you're getting ready to move me into something I've never seen before. You're getting ready to move me to a realm that I've never felt before. I'm here to tell you and know in certain terms that you are not alone. The greatest of all, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who had completed his mission on earth, was up on the cross, and even he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because at that moment, Jesus was about to experience something his but his being can never experience. Remember, Jesus being God in the flesh, the Son of God living in the flesh, heretofore had never experienced a separation from heaven. He never, although his body he was in a human body, here on earth, he was still not separated from the Father. And all of a sudden, he was going to go through something that God had not told him before. When he come down here, he was going to be cut off from God for a moment. And he said, oh my God, my God, why? had thou forsaken me and God could not answer him because when all the sins of the world came up on Jesus Christ and God is so holy he cannot be touched with sin and so when all the are y'all hear what I'm saying when all the yuck of the world came up on Jesus Christ he had to be cut from God while he was going through this transformation but I've got some good news for you <laughs> when it seemed like everything is being cut off when it seemed like God is not talking to you when it seemed like God has left you alone that's when you can rise up and say and it is finished for God I live and for God I'm going to die if you believe it clap your hands and shout yes if you believe it clap your hands and shout I'm moving out to move on up come on tell them I'm moving out to move on up if you believe that you clap your hands and shout glory in this house Can I talk a little bit more? This is amazing. So he gets over there and he starts walking on the water. All the disciples are in the ship and they've already been beaten and battered. Because if you know the body, remember the story? He said, and the wind was contrary. Let me tell you about that word contrary. That's the unique use of the word right there. If a thing is contrary, it literally means it has had a command that it now has decided to disobey. Uh, you need to catch what I just said. If a thing is contrary, that means it has already had a command, but it decided I'm going to disobey the command. How else can you be contrary if you have not already had a command? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So. It's just like my dad used to tell me, you know, so 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 you gonna just be headlong with y'all, y'all y'all in the deep south, y'all to recognize these words, headlong. Y'all know about headlong. That means hard headed. Hard -headed. See that? Thank you. Yeah, you hard headed. My dad, he, my dad from uh, Vicksburg, Mississippi, and mom, mom from Jackson, Mississippi. So these were head boy. You gonna you, you, you gonna be headlong anyhow, huh, son? <laughs> I understood what he meant. <laughs> So you're going to just disobey what I've already told you? So the wind was being contrary. Uh -huh. And Jesus knew it was being contrary. He, the, there were conversations happening between Christ and nature that no one ever really knew about until he was ready to show them yeah. exactly what was going on. He had already said to the wind, I'm sending my boys out here and don't you bother them. Because uh -huh. the devil saw it. Uh -huh. He said, oh, they're away from Jesus. I'm going to scare them. I'm going to scare the devil out. Okay, well, maybe the devil wasn't in there. Okay, I'm going to scare them so that they, oh, well, I'm just going to scare them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the wind starts being contrary. And Jesus starts walking. Now, as if it wasn't bad enough, you're being shaken, you're battered, and you're beaten, and you're being tossed, and you're being waterlogged, and water's coming into the ship, and narrow one, y'all know where narrow is? Okay, now one of y'all know how to swim. You haven't been to the YMCA. You don't know nothing about swimming. And you're being tossed to and fro in the boat. And all of a sudden, as if that wasn't bad enough, you've been beaten and tossed and rocked all night long. It's horrible. You're scared. And all of a sudden, with what little energy you have left, you open your eyes and somebody up here walking on the water. Uh, 
Lord, I haven't been through enough. Why do you got to come walk in the water? I can't even stand up. I don't have no strength left. I'm terrified. My knees are weak. I haven't had no eat, no greens, cornbread, cabbages. Ooh, anyway, I'm not. <laughs> I love coming to the south. But anyway, he says to them who are now reaching for something that he don't want them to reach for called fear. Uh -huh. fear, not. Yes, fear not. He says, I moved you out from where you were so I can show you where you got to go into. I know you think I've left you, but I've not left you. I moved you out because you're getting ready to move into something that you've never seen before. And now, there are all these folks in the church realm. Faith Temple, catch this. Faith Temple, catch this. All of you in the church realm, God is commanding you after all, especially in a place like this, that's been rooted and grounded in faith teaching. Come on. From the foundation of this ministry, faith, teaching, holiness, righteousness, that's the pillar, cornerstones of this ministry. And so now God is saying, I know you know something. I know you've heard much. So I'm going to require much of you. Somebody around the corner who just hears stories being told and little fables or little poems, what have you. He ain't going to come after them much. But for those who have much, he says, I know that you are going to need much. I need you to clap your hands right here and right now and say, Lord, come on, say, I'm moving out. Say it again, I am moving out. To move up. Everybody stand on your feet just for a moment. Lift up your hands and worship the Lord for just a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Lift up your hands just for a moment. Glory to God. In the presence of the Lord we stand. In the presence of the Lord we stand for God to show himself strong. For the mighty presence of God to show himself mighty. Now lift up your hands and worship him all over the house. Worship him all over the place. Right here and right now. For his presence to fill the place. And for only his will to be done. Thanks be to God. Now clap your hands and praise him in the house. Come on, clap your hands and praise him in the house. No, give him a real... A real clap offering of praise and thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Lift up your hands and worship him in the place. For there is no God like unto our God who come to show himself strong, even here and even now. There is no God that compare unto us, for he is righteous and he is just to show himself mighty. Now, come on, lift up your voices, everybody. Lift your voice and call on the name of the Lord, for you are God and you are God alone. You are my God, you are our God. And you are holy, and you are righteous, and you are just. Call him and give him glory, and give him praise in this house, in this place, in this place. Give him praise in this place. Give him praise in this place. In this place. Look at me, brother. Look at me. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. Stand up with me right now. Help him. To his feet. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I understand. Help him. In the name of the Lord, right here. Now, come on, clap your hands and praise him in this place. Mm -hmm. It's going to be all right. Now, look at me. Look at me. Give me a hug. It's going to be all right in the name of Jesus. The glory of God show himself strong upon you. I'm moving out. Give me a big hug. There we go. There we go. Come on, squeeze. Oh, it's too tight, I can't breathe. <laughs> Come on, somebody, help me praise him. Come on, help me praise him. Come on, help me praise him. Walk about letting me a little air real quick. Come on, help me praise him, somebody. Hallelujah. Yes. Shout glory in the house. Come on, shout glory in the house. Let me hear you shout glory in this house. Mm -hmm. Talk about moving out in God. 
He says, all right, I'm going to give you a test. I'm going to see if you know how to respond to something that you weren't prepared for. I'm going to see if you know how to quickly respond and take authority over something that you weren't ready for. I'll put you in a predicament and then I'll let something happen and see where you stand. Oftentimes, God allows a thing to take place just to see what you're going to do in that space. He will allow you to get in a situation. Some people will just stand in the boat and they ain't going to move. But God will say, if there's anybody in there, I didn't even challenge you, he said. But if you dare to ask me, he said, if that you let me step out from where I normally used to live in let me step out from mediocrity let me step out from real simple things and here's with one man out of 12 one out of 12 that's the ratio in churches today it seemed like one out of many will say if that's you let me leave the normal stuff that I'm used to let me leave the mundane stuff that I'm used to let me leave the emptiness that I'm used to and Jesus stopped and said oh you gonna believe like that well come on out here I'm here to tell you that if you decide that you're going to move out in God he's going to make it so that you can move up in him high five your neighbor tell him we got to move out we got to move out we high five somebody tell him we got to move out in God come on we got to move out in God high five somebody tell them we've got to move out in God come on tell them again we got to move out in God come on clap your hands and shout in this house Give a 30 second shout, 30 seconds. Come on, you got 20 more seconds. Fifteen more seconds. Come on, church. You gotta make up in your mind that you're gonna leave no stone unturned. Make up in your mind that nothing's gonna stop you. Make up in your mind that nothing's gonna make you afraid. Make up in your mind, I've been used to mediocrity. I've been used to smallness, but I'm taking my foot and get out of this situation. I'm getting out of small thinking. I'm getting out of little thinking. You may not wanna follow me, but I'm gonna step, if I have to step by myself, I'm gonna step out in God so I can move on up in Him. If you believe the crap for the shot, go in this place come on shot glory in this place remain standing for a moment even on a moment's notice God will allow a test I was prepared for this 